Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Christopher Fan Kaufman. And this is the podcast for February 14th, which of course is Valentine's Day, but in the liturgical calendar this year uh, is Ash Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. And our text for uh, Ash Wednesday in the Narrative Lectionary is Mark chapter 9, verses 30 through 37. So a shorter, uh, a shorter uh, uh, piece here, which is probably appropriate for Ash Wednesday, is uh, you have uh, uh, other liturgy to, uh, to, to do on Ash Wednesday. But here we get, again, uh, Jesus foretelling his death and resurrection. Um, uh, this is after the transfiguration, um, uh, after another healing story uh, in Mark uh, chapter 9. Um, so they uh, here they're uh, in the the Galilee. Um, he's teaching his disciples. He says, "The Son of Man, referring to himself, is to be betrayed into human hands. They will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again." Uh, but they don't understand. Uh, and then uh, another teaching here in Capernaum. Uh, he. Um, ask them what they're arguing about, but they were silent because uh, on the way they were arguing with one another who was the greatest. And he sits down uh, and uh, has uh, takes a little child um, in his arms and says to them, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever wel- welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. So again, this kind of paradox that we've seen uh, in the, the readings uh, in these uh, previous Sundays that we've been talking about, um, that um, humanly speaking, we want to be great. The disciples want to be great. They argue about who's great. And Jesus says to them, look, uh, not only am I going to suffer and die, but those, uh, those of you who follow me, my followers, need to be the servants of all uh, and to welcome, uh, welcome, uh, children uh, into your midst, uh, because the one who welcomes the child uh, welcomes me, uh, and the one who welcomes uh, me welcomes the one who sent me. I think this is one where, from our modern perspective, we may miss some of the uh, really shocking nature of this particular passage in that, especially in the modern West, we really have a tendency to glorify childhood and to talk about how wonderful it is to be a kid and so forth. I don't want to go too far. Some interpreters have gone too far the other way to say that ancient people didn't care about children at all or so Uh, forth, uh, which we know is not true. We've already seen this in Mark uh, where Jairus and his family are overwhelmed with grief at the fact that his daughter has died. So we want to keep that in mind. But the reality of childhood in the ancient world was that most children died and that most children Uh, did not even make it. We were talking, there's kind of the funny thing you might notice in the translation that uh, the child is referred to as it. Then he took a little child and put it among them. Uh, Children in Greek is a neuter word. And one of the things that we see is that the full acceptance of a child into the family comes when they have survived to near adulthood. And the again, because so often children die. And so to say that greatness is embodied in the fragility of a child is a really profound illustration of the teaching that Jesus has just offered that the greatness of the Son of Man is in his death and is in his laying his life down in, again, in a society where survival is so tenuous. Uh, I think that that's something we may miss because of the way that we construe children in the modern West. Is that an overstatement to say most children didn't die? Um, I'm asking a question about challenging you, but I had thought it was just it was more in the range of you know twenty to thirty five percent or some of these best guesses. But either way, I mean... Yeah, it it is probably an overstatement to say the majority of children died, uh, but to say many, many children died. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) it's that's really helpful. I mean, I'm thinking about uh, my my father is now 93. And uh, one of the things that we've done 
uh, last year when my aunt Shar died, and we went back to the uh, the part of the, the prairie where my uh, parents grew up uh, is to go to the where well, you go to one cemetery to bury, in this case, my aunt Shar, and then you look at the graves you know, right. of right. other family, mm-hmm. and then we went to other graveyards. Uh, in the country where dad had grown up and my great, my grandpa had a first wife and uh, who died of tuberculosis and she had two sets of twins, both of whom died at birth. And so you see their graves and then you see another family where the entire family was wiped out by, by tuberculosis, Mm -hmm. like six kids or something horrible. And yeah, in that sense, I, I think the whoever welcomes a child does really stand out uh, mm-hmm. different than our assumption that the child's healthy and, you know, mm-hmm. it's really helpful and, and harrowing, frankly. Well, and it's particularly appropriate that we're talking about this uh, kind of reality of death in the ancient world because uh, this is the text uh, this year for Ash Wednesday, right? And, of course, on Ash Wednesday... We have the ritual uh, of uh, of in the liturgy of marking people's foreheads with the sign of the cross in ashes, uh, and saying the words "Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return." Now, thank God, in our modern world, we don't have that high infant mortality rate or, ch- or child mortality rate. Um, obviously, some infants and children still die, uh, much to our sorrow, but it's not not at the levels of the ancient world, and women don't ch- die in childbirth as nearly as often as in the ancient world. Um, but, uh, so so thank God for that. And at the same time, I, I think because we're not faced so regularly with uh, the reality of death, uh, sometimes we, uh, we don't acknowledge it uh, sufficiently. Um, But we do on Ash Wednesday. On Ash Wednesday, we are reminded of our own mortality and of the mortality of those we love. I remember uh, as a pastor in a small town, Wisconsin, Arkdale, Wisconsin, uh, the the Ash Wednesday after my daughter Esther was born, my first child, right? Uh, she, She would have been not quite a year old at the time. And the person who uh, helped babysit her during services, brought her up, and I marked her forehead with the sign of the cross, right? This infant, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return, which broke my heart <laughs> and at the same time was uh, really meaningful that uh, just acknowledging that reality, I think um, Christianity is probably, or uh, let me put it this way, the, the church, uh, and especially on Ash Wednesday, uh, is one of the few places that you can acknowledge that reality in today's world. And that's why I think a lot of people, um, even if they don't uh, always go to church, they may go on Ash Wednesday. I was talking to one of my students who was a recent college graduate, and he said, yeah, my friends, even the ones who don't go to church, they make sure they go on Ash Wednesday because it is uh, such a profound statement. Uh, so we acknowledge the reality of death while at the same time not giving death the final word, right? Because it's Ash Wednesday, but Easter is coming. And that's that's what makes that that proclamation so profound. Yes, we are dust, and to dust we shall return. And that's not the final word about us, because Easter is coming.